أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله With Allah's name, the most gracious, the most merciful. Alhamdulillah. The praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the world. Rabbil Alameen. The Lord of the systems of knowledge. Complete with mercy and compassion, we say. <clears throat> Allah is full of rahmah. Full of mercy and compassion. We say that it is always the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to help us in every way to keep us on the al-surat al-mustaqim. That is the straight path. And the caveat to that is if it is our desire to be on the straight path, Allah will guide us there and keep us there. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. So it starts with our own niya and our own desire for something really to <coughs> happen in the context or in the way that it should happen. Alhamdulillah, <coughs> Rabbi Alameen. Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluhu. There is no God except Allah. Ahad. Alone, that is, without any associate, without any partner, no one that Allah needs to do anything. Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the slave servant, the universal messenger to whom Allah, by way of the angel Jibreel, revealed the Quran. And he says in, in this book, in the holy book, in huwa illa lil alameen. Verily, this is no less than a message to all the world. Not just the Muslim world, but to all the world, this message. Alhamdulillah, <coughs> Rabbi Alameen. And he says of, of Muhammad Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says of him that you will find in him Uswanatun Hasanatun, an excellent an excellent example of human conduct, of human behavior. For any people, or any person who has hopes in Allah, who has hopes in Allah, that is in the meeting of a, with Allah, because everyone's going to But if you have that hope, then the example, the model, is in Muhammad. Alhamdulillah, <coughs> So 
is no less than a message to all the world, as demonstrated in the life of Muhammad. And we say that it is, in saying that, we say it's a message to all of humanity. Allah, he says of us in the Quran, that he has made us a justly balanced community. A that's balanced, that's right and fair in what it does. And when we say that, we mean the individuals in the community, the Ummah. The Ummah itself says that we are to be a balanced community, that we are balanced. He made us balanced. Allah didn't make us to go to extremes. A lot didn't make us to be too much this way, too much that way, but to be balanced in our approach at matters and our approach at things. That we don't go too far. That we check ourselves. You know, when it comes to balance, balance is indicating that we're thinking. That we're using the greatest computer known in the history of the world, the human brain, the human mind. Now maybe somebody, you might, you might look, look around, you might say, oh, I don't know about that, the brain in that person. Or I may not, I don't know if, if that one is working like it's supposed to. But the human brain is the greatest thing that has been created. Allah gave us the, this brain and it is supposed to operate in our best interest. It operates in a different way than the brain of a common animal, the, the human brain that is supposed to. It's not supposed to operate like the common animal's brain. Our brain is operating on a different level. And the brain, when it, when it operates at the level that it is supposed to operate in, then we find ourselves in a state of balance. That's, why, that's how we find that balance. And you know, balance, you know, when you look at the scale, it's got a little <coughs> thing in that little point in the middle there. And it, you know, if you go too far, this way, the other one will go up, and that one will go down. And if you go too far the other way, vice versa. So, but if you stay right there in the middle, then you have an equal amount of both things. So we're supposed to, and this is the way we're supposed to look at life. We're supposed to look at life in such a way to where, no matter where life is directing us to, then we are ma we're maintaining a center line, you know, to the point to where we don't get misdirected and go off into a direction that's going to be counterintuitive to where we, what we are and who we should be. Alhamdulillah, you would have been When we find a balanced community, or if we look for a balanced community, if we're trying to have a balanced community, then we find balanced individuals. We find people of intelligence and people in possession of common sense. You know, common sense, it's something that seems like it's almost uncommon now. Just common sense. Just everyday common sense. See, when you start some things, you say you just almost have to stop and let it sink in. Common sense. And then you stop for a minute and let somebody, you let a person think of, oh, what exactly is it? Because common sense is implying that you have a, a degree of balance. Yeah, it's, it's implying that. you got common sense. The common sense is, is just mother with all. It's like the, the, the sense that your mother gave you coming out of the womb and raising you up. Don't do this. Don't do that. Do this. Th do that. Et cetera. In a sense of that, you know, we want to make sure that something doesn't happen to compromise you, that puts you in jeopardy. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah. So we're striving to be balanced people in a society to where it's, it's customary to go to extremes. In the society we live in now, it's, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's normal. That's the new normal, go to an extreme. That's, that's how it is. And, be, and as Muslims in a society like we live in, we have to be the most, we have to be careful that we don't lose our Muslim identity. We have to be careful in a society like this. Because they don't, they, don't, they don't mind you going to an extreme. There's nothing out there to check you, nothing out there to govern you other than yourself. Yeah, there's nothing out there. You know, we don't, we don't live in a society where they enforce 
you know, enforce the rules on, of, I'm talking about the, 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 the rules of the religion, <laughs> the rules of the dean, you know, where they enforce it. You know, you go to some places, you know, you just can't do anything. <clears throat> Especially you go to some Muslim countries, you know, the, many, the way many of us live in this, in this part of the world, we went in a, in a country where they're predominantly Muslims, I think some heads would roll. Because we go to it, we allow ourselves, we've allowed ourselves to be assimilated into the overwhelming cultural identity that we call America. We're Americans. And sometimes and many times we're Americans first before we're Muslims first. You know, it's all right to be an American, but it's better to be a Muslim in America. I'll say that again. So you have to think about that. It's all right to be an American because that's what we are, we're here. But it's better to be a Muslim. In fact, I'll, I'll even go to the next step. It's better to be a movement in America than to just be a, a simple American. Because to just be a simple American means that whatever is going on, we are part of it. We accept it as it is. We don't check it. We don't challenge it. We don't do anything about it. Okay, well, that, that's the way it is. But I, I can remember how things was 40, 50 years ago when I was a, a, little, a youngster and how they are now. What was acceptable then? You know, what was normal then? What was natural then? You know, this, now we have, we have issues with what's normal and what's un, unnormal, what's natural and what's unnatural. We, we can't even distinguish between what is and what isn't anymore. That means that we lost balance. Muslims are never supposed to be in a situation where they lose the balance that comes with faith because we're supposed to be what? We're supposed to be focused on a higher power. When we, say, when we say we have a kibbutz, that means we have a direction. And every time that you pray, you're facing that direction. You're facing what we call the kibbutz. And there's only one kibbutz. Is it another one? Now, there was a time when there was two kibbutz. But it's only one kibbutz. And one kibbutz means there's only one sense or one orientation that we should have, and we should all be directed in that direction. Right now, you're looking in the direction of the kibbutz. When you come to Juma, when you come, when you sit in the, in the, in the, in the you look, you're facing the, the speaker, the khatir, on Friday, you're facing the kibbutz. You're, you're really not facing me, you're listening to me. And, you know, and Juma is a captive audience. That's the time when you, you know, well, what, what are you going to do? You, you, have to, you just have to sit down and be quiet. You can't say nothing. You have to, you have to, you, you become assimilated into the group. We talked about that Sunday, how we become assimilated. But we're assimilated into the group. We're just here. And we focused, you focused on the speaker, but we all looking, you all are looking. I'm not, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at the faces, you know. And I normally you're looking at face, you got hot, you got the light on, what you get. I mean, you look at some of your faces it's like, man, what it look like? They like, well, you have to, can't look at them. Yeah, you be, you know, you have to look away. And focus on what you want to say, and what you want to do. Because you know, what, really, when it comes down to it, what is going to happen? Because really, what's, what's really, what's really important is what's going to happen after you leave today. What's really important is what's going to happen afterwards. Not what's happening right now. You think what's happening right now is important. Everybody comes to Juma because you think, I'm supposed to be here. Now, this ain't really what my talk was today, but it is now. We're here today because we're supposed to be here. But it's really not about whether or not you're supposed to be here. It's about what's going to happen once you leave here. What's going to happen after you, because you know what, I don't know. You do know. You got an idea of what's on your mind right now, but I got to take a stop. I got to stop. I got to make a pit stop right now because I got to go to Juma. It's Lord time on Friday. Got to be at the masjid. Someplace. But what is actually going to happen next? That's the, that's the what they say, the $64,000, $64,000 question, or the $128,000 question, or the million dollar question, whatever that number is. But that's the big question. What's going to happen next? Where does, your life, where does your life take you? Where does your interest take you after Juma? Now, on, you know, I, I talk about this a lot. You know, I have to. 
on Friday, Juma. The Quran doesn't say anything about come to prayer. It don't. It says be quick to remember Allah. It doesn't say be quick to assemble at the masjid on Friday. Everybody, it says be quick to remember Allah. Well, dhikr Allahu Akbar and the thinking on Allah is greater than anything. So uh, Allah is tell telling us on the day of assembly and really every day because we said that our whole life evolves around, the Muslim life evolves around prayer. It don't evolve around any other activity. Your greatest, your most prolific activity is your salah. Is that not correct? That's your most, when I say prolific, I mean that's the most thing you're supposed to be doing as far as deen is concerned. But where does the balance come from it? You know, when we look at, the, when we look at that number five, you know, uh, in digressing a bit, there's a, there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the, him and his companions were sitting and having a discussion. And an individual came looking, you know, he had on white, I got on black today. But he had on an all white suit that didn't even look like, he, you know, didn't have no signs of wear on it. That's what it said. Didn't look like, I mean, he looked like he just appeared. And he asked him a, a few questions. And one of the questions he had on, he asked him what was, what was al-Islam? Or what was Islam? And he went. He proceeded to tell him what they were: to have iman, tawhid, to believe in the oneness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And you know, when you just say that, you don't. You have to qualify that too. The first qualification is to pray. Prayer five times a day. Zakat, fasting, and then Hajj. But if you take those five numbers, the one in the middle is the cat. That's the one in the middle. That's where the balance comes from. And the cat is translated as charity. See, I had to stop right there. Charity. Well, actually, now, the cat, it comes from a word in the Arabic language, in Arabia, that means purification. It doesn't mean charity like that. It means to purify. It's a, it means to purify yourself through the act of love and giving. Yeah. It means to purify yourself through the actions that are associated with loving each other. And then Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that you'll never be what? You'll never be a believer. You'll never you'll never be a Muslim unless you believe. I might, I might have got that wrong. But none of you are really believers until you're motivated by love. In other words, when you're doing what you do because you love each other, who, who, who is it that you should really love? First of all, we should love all of humanity. We should even love non-Muslims. That don't mean we associate with them and we appreciate what they do. But what the essential nature that's in them, we love that enough to help them correct whatever's wrong with them by demonstrating it yourself. And the greatest community that has been placed on this earth, the balanced community that we call Muslims, the Ummah al-Islamiyah, that community is supposed to be the, the, bar the barometer for everything else that's going on as well. Our community is supposed to be the barometer for everybody else. People are supposed to look at us and say, man, I, I, I'm going to be one of them. I want to be one of those. What are they? That's what happened in what? What country? Indonesia. They say the interaction between the, the Muslims there, everybody in the country, man, we, we, we want to be one of them. Something must have happened. The Muslims of that time or the Muslims that they were exposed to must have been um, really on the dean. Now, we say Islam is the <laughs> fastest growing religion in America. And I'm like, man, well, how is it, where is it growing at? I mean, what's it growing into? What is it growing into? It might be a whole lot of, you know. Now, it really, it's common sense to, to come to the conclusion in our mind that, well, I don't think a man is God. That, I mean, I think, we, I think, you know, if we ponder on that long enough, I think we could come to the conclusion in our own mind that, okay, I don't, I don't think a man is God. I'm pretty sure of that. 
So how is so 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 coming to the conclusion that Allah is God, if there's only one God, that's not a big deal. It's how you represent that understanding once you have it. How do you represent the idea, the concept that there's only one Allah? There's only one Allah if you have that understanding. Everything else that comes associated with that. Prayer, the cat. Fasting, the, the main three in the middle. The main three in the middle. The balance comes from those things. Because when you get to the Hajj, you know, you didn't really say, I, I got it all. So, again, Juma is not about just coming, it's about what's going to happen afterwards. I mean, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه جمعين أما بعد أيها المسلمون وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وله الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. So to go on in the the surah entitled Juma. Again, we mentioned that it asks of us to be quick, to be quick to remember Allah. Don't, 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 don't delay. Don't be soft. Don't be, don't be unsure of that. Be quick. Be fast about it. Be on it. And in that surah, you know, this, is, this surah is a short, it's really a short surah. It's 11, it's 11 verses there. And it really doesn't get into the, it didn't really doesn't start talking about Juma, the Jumu'ah itself until it gets down to the, about the ninth verse, almost at the end. Then it starts to talk about, you know, Juma. So in, in other words, it's given a hint that there's other, some whole, a lot of other things taking place first. But when, it, when, but when it actually does talk about Juma, then it says, oh, you who believe when the call is made, be quick to remember Allah. Haste and earnestly, it, it translates, it says, haste and earnestly to the remembrance of Allah and stop what it is that you're doing. In other words, give up, stop what your interests are, what concerns you, what you're motivated by. It stop that. And then, uh, then Allah comes behind and it says, and that's better for you if you only knew. Yeah, that's better for you if you only knew. That's, that's telling us that we really don't know what's best for us. Allah has to come and tell us what's better for us. And then when Allah tells us what's better for us, then that means we should be motivated by that. <coughs> we should be motivated by what Allah says is best and then do what's best. <coughs> and then he comes behind that verse in the 10th verse, it says, and when the prayer is finished, then you may disperse through the land and seek of the bounty of Allah. But however, still remember Allah much that you may be successful. Yeah, in other words, when you still, when you go, when, once you get focused, because, because when you say you are, when you're in your state of prayer, which you should be all the time, that means you all, you balanced and you focused. When you're, in this, when you're in the state, in your Muslim state, that means you're balanced and you're focused. You're, not, you, you're on it like it's supposed to be. So Allah says, no, when you go back out there, what's going to happen? You're going to be pulled in every direction. And then he said, but when you go out there, remember Allah much, frequently, so that you can be successful. Because as soon as you forget Allah, you're on the path to failure. As soon as you forget Allah, it's, it's, you, it's, it's, it's dark, we are downward slope. Alhamdulillah, you don't know what I mean. And then it says, but when you see some bargain or some pastime, it's telling you something. They disperse headlong to it and leave you standing. Leave who standing? <laughs> Who's standing? <coughs> I'm the only one standing. Or somebody on the pulpit is standing, right? Says, so you see something, you run into it, 
and leave whatever, whatever, whatever was there before us. <laughs> Almost nothing happened. Because you're off into something else. The Muslim community, again, this is the most prolific, this is the most profound, this is the best community on the earth. And we should be about the business of making sure that that is a reality in our own minds and our hearts, in our homes, in our community, and in the people that we're associated with. <clears throat> so, Juma is human life. And it's not simply about coming together, it's about also being together. Especially in purpose. Being truly alive as a Muslim in any day, especially on Friday, is to be alive for unity. And it is a unity that helps us to realize what our individual and collective potentials are. Are. A-R-E. If and when that occurs, or when that happens, then we can build a more viable family, a more viable community, a more viable society. In fact, the world would be a better place place for all of humanity, for all of mankind. That is what's key to our success as Muslims and as human beings. <clears throat> so we're always going to find things happening that's going to challenge us. But Allah has given us the guidance to be able to meet the challenges. And it takes, it takes time. It takes commitment. Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that this deen is sincerity, nasiha. It's sincerity. What does sincerity mean? Sincerity means that you're serious and your heart is connected to it. It means that you're serious about what's going on in the community and the life that you live in that you chose. You're serious about it. And the word deen, it says, it says, it says, it says, it dinu nasiha. It didn't say religion. And deen doesn't mean just religion. Deen means your debt. Dean means debt. The debt that you owe Allah, you have to pay it back sincerely. You owe Allah, what, what do you owe Allah for? You owe Allah for, your, for, your, for that, for that amana, for the trust that you was given. You owe Allah for being a sentient being. You owe Allah for being able to think. You owe Allah for being able to make a choice, to make a decision. You owe Allah that because no other animal have that ability but man. Only man can make a decision. And he makes a decision based upon his relationship with Allah in the best interest of his own best interest. <coughs> and if he's not doing that, then he can't pay. You can't pay the debt. You can't pay the debt unless your heart is connected to um, oh, Allah. Because you're supposed to be so thankful to Allah for you being you that you should be in tears if something challenges that. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? If you get to the point to where something comes into your life which causes you to lose the favor of Allah, of the favor of Allah, you should be in tears. Yeah, if something comes up and, you're, and it, it pushes you towards the hellfire, you should be ashamed and you should be, oh Allah, save me from the fire. That's going to take some sincerity. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take some community. It's going to take all of us to work together towards what's right, what's proper, what we should be doing. Don't allow ourselves to continue in, in this, this cycle. And the cycle I'm talking about is to just show up and then go. Because again, it's what's really important about Friday is what comes after it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما بركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة الله أكبر الله 
Allahu Akbar. Salam wa 
عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Um, we have some allowed dinners downstairs. They are, um, I think the menu is lamb, barbecue lamb, barbecue lamb, fish, and a host of other things. I don't really know the whole menu. So um, these are donation dinners. Of course, you probably already know that. Um, for ten dollars, you can get a dinner for yourself, or you can purchase, give the ten dollars for somebody that do not ha have the money, that cannot cannot afford it. And the sister Khadija, you can give it to the sister Khadija or the brother Yaya.